Hello mate and welcome to Let's Code 4, this time it's personal, season finale this time. Now this is not going to be a hugely long episode because the majority of the code that we've done is fully functional and so your game should be pretty much ready to start filling with content but there are a few little pieces of admin that I want to do that's going to make it a little bit easier to make this a game. Before I get started, of course, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon. That really helped me out. And of course, an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will run across the screen at the end of the video. Incidentally, if you are interested in supporting the channel, feel free to visit the Patreon in the description down below. Or you can simply join the channel by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button. Either way, your support is hugely appreciated. Alrighty, so let's jump into this. So the first thing that I want to deal with is there are going to be situations in the game where I want to be able to only do something once a day. And currently we don't have a mechanism in place to do that. And it's actually a really, really simple thing that we can do. All we have to do is choose one of the actions that we can do. So for example, where we've got this procedure, this label that we created previously which is when you click on the window in the front of the house currently all it does is it says you clicked on my window now what I need to do is in my defaults and defines I'm actually going to create a new variable I'm going to call it uh, daily logs I'll give it a capital D a capital L and it's going to be an empty list right now now this is going to be a big variable that we're going to refer to quite a bit throughout the game because what we want to be doing is we want to stop the player from just drinking coffee over and over and over again if they want to top up their energy or that sort of thing because the um, human body can only sustain so much punishment. So daily locks is going to be something that we're going to check for a lot of things. However, in the case of this label, what we want to do is we want to say if, and when we're going to just give this, assign this label uh, a special word. So let's just say, hmm... Let's just say window click. And then you could say if you have multiple windows and you won't do you want to be able to click on one today, you could just say like window click 01 in daily locks. Then we're going to just simply say you can't do that again today. And then hit turn if we can remember how to spell return and then if it doesn't contain that then what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, dollar sign daily locks dot append and then we're going to simply put in our string window click underscore zero one like so and then that is going to basically if we click on it once it's going to say you clicked my window and then if you click on it again it'll say you can't do that again today which is fine now we need to make some kind of uh, function in our time system that resets this every day so if we come back into our classes currently we have next and we have past clickies we have story arc checks locations locations character who is who is bt stop audio yada 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 but we don't actually have a way of moving time onwards which i think you'll agree is suboptimal because if we look at our defaults and defines we have times of day so we need to be able to actually move on through our times of day and then once we get to the bridge between night and dawn then we need to uh, reset our daily locks variable. So our times of day, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times of day. Come back into our classes and we can just double check that we don't actually have a property in there for doing that because it would not be the first time that I've overlooked something and then rewritten the code for something I've already done. We don't actually have one in there. We have a next which moves on our chapter but we don't have an add time. So what I'm going to do is add time, and then I'm going to input um, a number there, which is going to tell us how many times of day we're going to skip on with. So we'll just put time or TOD. We'll just put TOD in there so that make it nice and simple. And that's cool. So we need to access our global, some of our global variables. 
So we need to put in our daily locks in there for sure. We also need to access our time of day there. We don't need to access these, we just need to access our time of day there. So we need to access that and we come here, go there, time of day. Now then, time of day, so basically we have a maximum number of uh, times a day, which is seven, or in this case it's six. So if uh, TOD is greater than or equal to seven, or well, let's just say greater than six, let's just make things easier on ourselves, then we're just gonna do nothing because we don't want you to be able to skip forward that much. Realistically, the only times we're gonna be using this is once every time we do an action, which is gonna increment our time of day by one. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where we need to, let me just double check, we actually have a, uh, divines and defaults we actually have, so we don't actually have a day, so we're just going to cycle through without indicating what day it is. So that's fine. So again, we, we could lock it so that you couldn't add, add more than six. Um, realistically, that would be the most sensible thing to do. Because there's absolutely no benefit in adding more than that because we don't have a way of tracking what day it is. All we're doing is we're going from one time of day to the next. Some activities might take two times of day, for example. However, we want to minimize the amount of thing, things that we can do that mess things up, basically. So what we want is to simply go into, to say, TOD equals six. So we can't move on more than one whole day at a time. You don't have to necessarily put this in if you don't want to, but that's what I'm going to do. Next thing we want to do is we want to actually add our time of day to our time of day, or rather we need to say uh, TOD to a time of day plus equals, and then we're gonna say TOD. Nice and simple, we're adding the number that we've put in there to the time of day, and then we're gonna say if time of day, yeah. is greater than six and then we just let's just copy this and get fed up with having to type it over and over again there we go time of day time of day minus equals six so what we're saying is if we add a variable if we're on say five and we add six to it then obviously it's going to go over our six and then that means that we need to go back down to whatever it's going to be now what we also, this is basically what we're saying is if we are about to cross the bridge from one day to the next, this is where we're gonna set our daily locks. We're gonna reset it, it's that simple. So now whenever we cross the threshold between one day and the next one, our daily locks are reset and we can start doing stuff again. That's really all there is to it, creating this function because it's really a simple numeric system of zero to six chooses a time of day and then we reset so it's no no more complicated than that there we go so now we can come back to our window my house thing here and what we can actually do is we can now say that let's say for argument's sake that carrying out this action on this carry on this window is going to take one time of day in which case we just simply say dollar add time and then open our brackets and put in one in there and then that will simply, well, that'll do everything we needed to do, basically. Now we can also go into our default interactions. And if you'll notice, currently we're doing this time of day plus equals. Now we can actually re replace this with add time, open brackets. And now what's going to happen is it'll just use that function that we've just created and it'll mean that as we do things it's going to creep over into um, our next day if required now this is where things get fun because now we can start adding icons like a bed in the bedroom and we can actually create a function which means that when we add time we can check what time of day it is so let's just arguably let's write a a new function item clicks new file and we're going to call this 
funk underscore bed underscore my underscore bedroom underscore and now I believe that's a time of day lock there so we'll just say bed we're just going to call this file bed just to make life simpler and then we're going to copy this and we can go into bed.rpy and paste that there now we're going to change some of these values but what we can do is come back to our script and we can actually check what the uh, what the functions there are actually for because if you remember we got item click if the click type is item click then it's going to call ui return but it's checking on a lot of these things within our item screen and if we return back to the function where we actually pass in our clickies what we can see is we've got function here this is the label name that we're looking for is funk and in that is contained one which is nice name three which is the button type or the location sorry stand corrected and the uh, fun and the chapter which is none so if we come back here and we can look at this here we've got this window my house none in this case our location that we're looking for is my bedroom or bedroom so we're going to copy that so we can remove that and paste that in there the item itself is just going to be called bed uh, let's say bed one or bed zero one and then we don't need that in there because we're going to check what time it is once we've clicked on it so the first thing we have to do is copy this because we don't want to be able to sleep multiple times a day that's just going to be silly so we're going to say if bed or sleep let's just put sleep in there like that and then we can also but let's just copy the whole thing and then we can change what we need to change as and when so we we'll pop this bit after here and then we just need to remove that and change that to sleep so you can only sleep once and so if you've already slept we're going to say you can't do that again today now what we're also going to do is do a time check because you should only really be able to sleep when it's night time so we're going to say if time of day is not equal or not equal depends on how you want to do it is not equal to six then we're going to also say you can't do that right now return cool so now we're going to say if it's the if you've already done it you can't do it if you are not doing it at the right time of day then you can't do it and then what we're going to do is if you go to sleep at, in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to make it possible you can sleep at two times of day. So we're not going to say that. We're going to say if it's not within 5,6. Oops. Oh, my God. It's all gone horribly wrong. Let's just remove that. If the time of day is not either 5 or 6, then we're going to say you can't do that right now. And then we're going to add 2 to the time of day. So if you go to sleep at, let's just come back to our defaults and defines. If you go to sleep at dusk, you'll wake up one, two at dawn. If you go to sleep at night, you'll wake up in the morning. That makes life a little bit easier. So there's two options there. So you can either get an early night or you can get a normal night. Entirely up to you. There may be some events that only happen at dawn, which means that going to bed at dusk might be necessary although you don't necessarily have to indicate that to the player it might be one of those things that they just kind of have to figure out on their own entirely up to you cool so what we could also do in here is we could have because essentially what you've got in this gap here is sleeping forward slash dreaming forward slash nighttime activity takes place which means that, you know, if your character, if you have a random dream kind of scenario that happens, if, you know, certain things happen or an event happens at nighttime while you're asleep in bed or whatever, this is where that can happen. And failing that, what you probably want to do is just do scene black with dissolve so that it will at least give you the indication that something is happening. If you use a dissolve, it kind of gives the impression that time the passing of time is happening and then we can move on to 
the next day. So we'll save that and then that should work just fine. We've got a couple of checks in there. And these are the cool things that we can do. We can put in, we obviously have to remember to put in a bed zero one icon in the bedroom. Otherwise that's, this isn't gonna be called. But if you remember from a couple of episodes ago, creating those icons on the screen, it really is as simple as just creating a new file that we can cut out from the background file if you want to or whatever uh, and saving it. It doesn't matter where we save it anymore because in the last episode we changed the way that our game checks for these icons and just passes them as long as we have the correct file name. So, so far so good. We've created that and that's just a neat, neat little function that's going to make life a little bit easier and just adds a bit more of a gameplay dynamic because now you can't just sleep all day if you get bored. Um, and you can add this check to pretty much any kind of uh, function that you want. You don't have to have a specific name inside there. You can just say like, for example, I'm clicking on the bed that's within the bedroom, but I'm just checking to say if sleep is in the daily locks, then you can't sleep again. Now, this should never ever fail because it's physically impossible for you to sleep and it not be the next day. However, the way that we've done it is that it's doing this check before it's adding the time. So you can sleep in the morning, wake up in the morning, and then if you try and sleep again, it's going to mess up because it will say you can't do that again. So that is potentially a bit of a problem, isn't it? Because we are saying that you can't do this until five or six. Once you've completed the sleeping cycle, then we're adding the time and then we're checking to see if you've done it again that day. But we've managed to get around that problem by putting the daily locks append sleep before we add the time. So it just in case somehow the player does manage to sneakily mess up and get themselves into a bit of a bother, these checks will make sure that you physically cannot sleep at the wrong time of day and that if you, by somehow you do manage to sleep for only one hour, it's still physically impossible to sleep again that day. So little bit of a convoluted kind of system but in this case it functions perfectly fine this is as basic as it can possibly be we're just filling a list full of things that you can only do once a day and then resetting that list as the passage of time crosses over to the next day so that about wraps it up for this season guys i hope you found that entertaining and useful let me know what you think in the comments below i'm sure you will and I will see you in the next one, but keep me updated on the progress of your games. I am always curious to see how people sort of use these engines. Uh, patrons will obviously have a download of the completed source code from my end. And either way, thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.